summarize all four of those because those are important. We're gonna we're gonna do enough of them. Okay, so finding pH. So all the uh, problems that I usually ask are going to at least start off with, what is the pH of dot, dot, dot. Okay, that's usually how it starts off. So that's the first, well, the first thing you got to think about is what is that type of solution like we've been talking about. So we have four possibilities. Are strong acids Okay, so you're looking at a problem. What is the pH of blah blah blah? How would you know if it's a strong acid? Two big things. One of the If it's one of the three I asked you to memorize, so HCl HNO3 or H2SO4. But then, uh, really, I mean, if you're out in the real world looking at an acidic solution, if you're trying to figure out if it's a, a strong acid or weak acid, dissociates 100%, so doesn't have a K. So both of those things are true. It's going to ionize 100%. But if you look up the physical properties of it and it doesn't have a Ka, then you know it's strong. <coughs> so no Ka. And because of that 100% ionization that Sylvia said, uh, what can we assume or what do we know about the hydronium concentration? It's a one-to-one -one ratio, it's the same, okay? So your concentration of your strong acid, Sa, or Sa, no, nobody does that. Don't, don't say that. Equals your hydronium. And then you just take that in and plug that into your pH equals negative log of the hydronium concentration. Second type of solutions you might have are your weak acids. Or your WAS. Again, no, don't say that. Nobody says that. How are you going to know if it's a weak acid? You're reading it. What is the pH of blah, 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 molar solution? How are you going to know it's a weak acid? Has a Ka. Bingo, bango has a Ka. So for my problems, it would be, what is the pH of this solution? Oh, by the way, you probably might want to know that the Ka of this is uh, blah, blah, blah. And so Ka, you see that equilibrium constant, you know it's weak. A, you know it's nothing. All right, so what do we know about the concentration of the weak acid and the hydronium? They're not going to be equal, are they? Okay, so your concentration of your weak acid, or your wa does not equal your hydronium. All right. Because it's going to set up equilibrium. So what do you have to do? You have to set up ice table. Uh, and solve for hydronium concentration at equilibrium. And most of the weak acids we deal with uh, are very small Ka's, so usually you can use that extra small approximation, so they're not too bad. And right, then you take that and of course then you just take pH equals negative log of the hydronium. Okay. 
Then we went over to the uh, base end of the uh, pH spectrum and we dealt with strong bases. Or it's a buzz. Again, no, probably shouldn't do that. I'll stop. No, I won't. You know I won't. All right, how do you know if it's a strong base? Group one or group two? Hydroxides, yes. So group one or group two hydroxides. Uh, so we did both examples. We did a group one and group two. Group one, because it's a one to one ratio, because all the group one cations are plus one. It's a one to one ratio with the hydroxide. So whatever your concentration of your metal hydroxide, your MOH, or MO, no. Equals the concentration of your hydroxides for group one. For group two, all of the cations are going to be what? Plus two, right? So when they make a compound with hydroxide, it's going to be, you're going to have two hydroxides for every one mole of the cation, right? So your hydroxide concentration will be twice. Now I'm having trouble writing today. Jeez, oh man. Two times the concentration of whatever your metal hydroxide is from group two. Or your MO. -O. There's two of them. Thank you. Gotta get one chuckle. Not getting much more. All right, then what do we do? So we, now we have our hydroxide. POH, yep, that's usually what I do. So then I take this and I take it into POH equals negative log of the hydroxide. And then what? Once I got my POH, pH equals 14 minus that, good. Or paha equals 14 minus paho. We can make up our own language. We can make up our own acid base language. Where all we do is talk about like the ka, the wa, and the paha, and everybody, we know what we're talking about. We're like in a secret club, nobody else does. All right, so one more, of course, and the one we just did was the weak base, and it's going to be very similar to the weak acid because, of course, they set up equilibrium. Well, bah. Okay, you got it. The weak base. Well, bah. Okay, how are you going to know it's a well, bah? It has a KB. <laughs> it has a KB, yes, of course, it does. So it's going to set up equilibrium. It's going to have an equilibrium constant K, and we call it the KB for the weak bases. All right, so just like the weak acids, we're going to have to set up ice. This time we're going to solve for not hydronium, hydroxide.
Then, once we've got that, you know, do the algebra. Again, weak bases, just like weak acids, are going to have small KBs. If you look at that table, they've got pretty small KBs, so we should probably be able to do the excess small approximation. So I do a little bit of algebra. We've got our hydroxide. And then, same thing as the strong bases. Calculate the pOH, and then turn that into the pH by subtracting it from 14. Okay, so that's what we've been, we've been doing. All right. So there's going to be one more uh, type of solution that we're going to solve for pH. Next chapter, and we already we briefly talked about it, we have buffers, and that's when you have a mixture of weak acids and weak bases. But we'll save that for next. Okay.